Greeting everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Top 10 Songs. We've got a slew of guest stars here today, right? We've got the trio is in action today. Once again, for the first time since the holidays, welcome to the show. Nick Franco and Steve Keeler from Rock Fantasy. Greetings, my friends. Welcome to Sea of Tranquility. Hello. Hello, everyone. What's up? Rock on, man. <laughs> So everybody, we're going to be talking about our favorite 10 tracks from German power metal legends, Halloween. Uh, and this is a video that's been requested by a lot of people. We've got a lot of folks asking for Halloween. And as soon as Nick found out that there was an interest in doing this, he was all over it. Steve is all over it as well. Steve's even got his Halloween shirt on today. He came dressed uh, with the correct apparel. I unfortunately didn't do that, nor did Nick, but that's okay. Pumpkins United. There you go. Dudes and wizards. It's okay. There you go. All right. I, I, I went real old school today. So nice. Whatever. So, yeah, all right, Nick. So, uh, you know how this works, guys. We're going to we start at our number 10. We'll work our way to number one. We do like a round robin thing. So, <clears> Nick is going to kick us off with his number 10. He's going to tell us the song, the album it came from, any little anecdotes he'd like to. So, Nick, kick it off. All right. So, uh, it was very hard to compile this. A lot of great songs, but um, I decided okay. to give some love for the number 10 spot to um, the song, Who is Mr. Madman? that's a good one which uh, is off the album seven centers from 2010 um i believe it was written by sasha gerstner who was one of their um most recent uh, acquisitions he's been on their guitar for a long time um it's super 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 catchy and just absolutely is vintage halloween and uh, i love it it's ear candy just stays in your head as soon as you listen to it one of the best songs from that album i think all right what do you got steve so i'm going to number 10 i'm gonna go with eagle Fly Free, which is from uh, Keepers 2, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm starting off with that. I had, I had a million of them here for honorable mention. I hope we can do it in 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> now, do you guys agree that Halloween had um, almost every single album they ever put out kick-ass album openers? Pretty much. They, absolutely, yeah. They know how to start an album. <laughs> so in saying that, my number 10 is Soul Survivor from Master of the Rings. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Yeah. And my honorable mentions for sure. Yes, yes. me too. Great tune. Uh, underrated album, I think. Mm -hmm. First album with Andy on vocals. So mm -hmm. I dig it. All right. Number nine, what you got, Nick? So for number nine, I went with um, when they did Keeper the Legacy, which was that third Keeper album they did in 2005. And it got a lot of, oh, why are they doing this now? Kind of crap from people. But um, I felt it had some very long songs. Some of them were a little too long, but uh, The Invisible Man, um, to me, that hit it right in stride. Beautiful, catchy, epic, um, keeps your attention. Beautiful guitar soloing, Invisible Man. Yeah, I dig it. That's a pretty different album for them, even though they kind of revisited the theme. Uh, I think that was more of like um, very symphonic, kind of epic album, you know, a little mm -hmm. break from the straightforward power metal stuff, you know, which I thought was pretty cool. Good song. I dig that. Yeah, That's in my honorable mentions. So, good one. I'm at number nine. Cool. I'm number nine. None. Number, number nine, nine Steve. Uh, yeah. Push. Better oh. from Better Than Raw. I think that that how heavy is that song, like vocal wise and everything? Like they come, he comes out like screaming at speed metal. It's not power metal that song. Is it? it kind yeah. it kind of throws back to like the early Halloween in a you know a little bit of a different form, better production. Or Better Than Raw album is actually one of one of my favorites from down the road. I thought it was very heavy. Yeah. It is, yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> it's your favorite album? It's my favorite album of Halloween. Yep. Wow. wow. I don't, I don't go that far. You're going to find out what my favorite is as we get down the list. <laughs> you know, Steve, I read somewhere on the internet this morning, someone uh, made a statement on that song that that was Halloween's painkiller. Kind of is, yeah. Right? You know? That's a good, that, that is a good that Halloween's painkiller, yeah. yes. Yep. yep. I can see that. So my number nine was Steve's uh, number 10, Eagle Fly Free from Keys, Keeper of the Seven Keys, part two. Great album opener. Great Michael Kiske vocal. I did yeah, those yeah. two albums. So, Definitely. All right, Nick, what do you got? Number so for number eight, I'm going all the way back to the Halloween EP released in 1985 when they had Kai Hansen on vocals. Oh, um, yeah. And the late uh, Ingo Schrichtenberg on drums. What a, what a great drummer that kid was. Very tragic suicide. Um, but uh, the song Cry for Freedom. I feel like it presaged exactly what they were going to do uh, with their career, with the slow build to that speedy German uh, speed slash power metal. Um, I feel like it's still one of the strongest songs they've ever written. 
Thumbs Crossing up here. For freedom. That's not on my list. That, this happened last week with Opeth with Demon of the Fall. How did I forget that one? <laughs> my mind hasn't you been still can't get over that. This week, and I've been working on this, but I, you know, I've also there's a lot of things in the world, so my mind isn't 100 percent focused. So it's not good. So I'm better. I've been home. If my selection makes Steve grumble, then I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm at number eight, right? Yep. Keeper to Seven Keys, Part One. I'm alive. You know, it's a good song for this week, at least. At least. Yes. It's like yeah. we're alive still, and I'm alive, and I've been in the house for 31 days, and I'm alive. <laughs> yep. I I always used to crank that song after like the SATs or like something difficult. You know, I would always blast "I'm Alive" at top volume when I make it through something in life. <laughs> yeah, great song. Another great album opener. Love those double bass drums on that. Great vocals. Great song. Oh, yeah. So where where are we at? Number eight. All right. My number eight is uh, from Gambling with the Devil. How about Kill It? And my honorable mention. That's a great, another speedy crushing track, right? Mm-hmm. Great, yeah, great for song. sure. Good choice. Yep. Good choice. All right. We're into number seven. What do you got, Nick? So for number seven, I'm remaining on the Halloween. I don't hear it on the... Uh, Walls of Jericho when they combine them. Um, the openers, speaking of openers, Starlight. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like that song just um, crushes and and has all the melody and all the heaviness that, that you know, what they started was something very different at that time because I think they combined speed metal with power metal in such a way that I don't think anybody had done. And uh, that song just absolutely kills it. Yeah, good choice. Thanks. Good. Yes, yes. <clears throat> All right, it's Steve, my you're turn up. now. I am at number seven, correct? Yep. Uh, uh, brain fade. I was thinking about something. Uh, I Want Out. One of their, uh, probably one of their most known songs from Keeper to Seven Keys Part Two. And, you know, it seems like a lot of people who don't know much about Halloween or just an average metalhead go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they do that song, I Want Out. Yeah, yeah, that's that. Uh, it's, got it's, a, uh, it's a great song. I love it. It's catchy. Yeah, catchy. Um, yeah and it, you know, and, it's a it's a cool even I still watch I, I I watched that video not too long ago. Yeah, it's a good tune. It's memorable. I think you know from that album you had that song you had Doctor Steen I think which is uh, both Steen, of them pretty song. memorable. <laughs> <laughs> pretty memorable. All right, my number seven. Uh, I believe Steve already mentioned this, but uh, from Better Than Raw, Push. Push. My number seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cranking tune. Crank Absolutely. Tune. All right, we're back to Nick. Number six. Number six. I want out. <laughs> um yeah you know i want out of this goddamn I, I, one of you. yeah that that song um <laughs> yeah i want out it absolutely uh fits for for today's time um i think that song has aged very well also i think um it's like their run to the hills you know it's what everybody knows that definitely is that a good yeah. that's a good uh that's a good one yeah, yeah. that's like the how push is painkiller that's like mm -hmm. run to the hills run. and yeah, if you yeah. look at halloween if you look on spotify it's got like 40 million downloads and it's like 30 million more than the next behind it i think wow but, uh, so it, it, yeah it's very popular but <laughs> that was my point i guess yeah that song when i was a kid that gave me because i did one out of my high school and everything and that song was the encapsulated that beautifully i think after we get done filming that's we should come back on zoom and do some halloween karaoke there might have to be some alcohol Ooh, definitely don't have any other <laughs> viewers on that one <laughs> <laughs> how about Pete pardo does a karaoke night zooms it with some guests <laughs> It might be something. I mean, we're gonna run, not gonna run out of ideas, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so Pete, go ahead, Pete. Now you're up, Steve. Oh, I'm up again. Yeah, we're number, at six. number six already. Yeah. See, I'm I'm brain fading. Uh, this is one of my favorites, probably because of my love for pinball. And uh, anybody got a guess what it is? I know exactly. I last week oh, I knew no. you were gonna fit this on too. Yep, I knew it. Of course, my Gorgar is not here with me in the quarantine. Oh. It's up at Rock Fantasy. Gorgar? Uh, Gorgar is one of the most famous pinball machines ever made. It's the first talking pinball machine by Williams in 1980. And I remember being at my old store, Rock and Roll Fantasy, back in 1979. I was across from the Orange Plaza, where Walmart is now, and having customers coming in. Hey, did you go over to the store? Did you go over to Arcade to just fun and play? That talking pinball machine, and of course it was Gorgar. So. Gorgar is all about a song they wrote about going into they call it the gambling hall, but it's an arcade and hearing this game is pulsing in your head and it has the Gorgar will eat you and 
<laughs> I guess that's my number six. It could have been number one, but the, it's not the one I like the best. But you know, a lot of people just rally around. Of course, we have a Gorgar T-shirt that we did for the store, like a logo, pinball related. I'm rambling on, so go ahead. All right, I knew that was going to be in your top ten. All right, I'm going to go. Uh, my number six has already been mentioned by one of you guys, or both of you guys. I'm alive from Keys yeah. Part One. Cool, cool. Could have been higher, but I, you know, I, there's some other classics that are going to be a little higher, but it's a great song. I love it. Love that album. All right, Nick, you're up. So uh, for number five, <clears throat> um, this middle part of my list is sticking to the old stuff, but uh, Ride the Sky, mm -hmm. uh, 1985, that's just a vintage Halloween banger. That yeah. is. That's also just called an absolute Wall of Jericho slash Ride the Sky, though, correct? Yeah, the intro that which is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like the trumpeting intro, yeah, which yeah, works yeah. very well. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful song, beautiful yep. song. I think. Good. So choice. number five. Yep. For me is hurry up! It's Halloween, the epic. <laughs> uh, what, what was it? Thirteen minutes long. Nope. Yeah, that indeed. Yep. Trick Somebody did a um, grab your sorry. mask and don't be late. Yeah, somebody did a, they made the lyrics to do with COVID. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what, what is it? What are the lyrics? I hope it's, I'm not going to butcher it here, but it's, um, oh, it's like, grab your mask and don't be late. <laughs> it's just all about. Okay, it's mask related. It's, you got yeah. to look it up. It's, I think it's out there. It's so funny. <laughs> I have Rock Fantasy open for curbside. I don't know what picture do I use today? So I put up some of our trick or treat Iron Maiden masks. I'm like, not at 95s, but they're a cool <laughs> mask. You might want to wear it over your, you know, whatever. I don't know. It's crazy time. Yeah, it is. It is. All right. My number five. Let's go back to Walls of Jericho for How Many Tears. Oh. Right? That's a great song. That's another song that fits into today's drama that we're living in life. If you listen yeah. to the lyrics, I was, I was setting some of this up around midnight last night, right before I went to bed, and I was listening to that lyric-wise on YouTube, and I was like, man. How many tears? Yeah. Dramatic, powerful, man. Great song. I love yes. that album. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up with that album, so, you know, it's... Oh, <laughs> too, Steve oh, knows. Man. Yeah, exactly. In fact, in fact, I think I bought that album at your store. Um, well, I opened in November of 85, and that came out in early in 85, so it's quite possible, yes, yeah, so if you didn't get yeah. it from yeah. day one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, it's a long time ago. <laughs> All right, Nick, what do you got? <laughs> so we're on number four. Number four. Um, I'm going back to that 2010 Seven Sinners album uh, to the song Raise the Noise. That, That's a good one, too. Yeah, It wow. could have been my number one. I really, I love that song so much. It has a flute solo, which is, uh, it's really. Can't go wrong with that. Kick ass. Uh, too far solo, some melodies. Yeah, very catchy. Love it. Raise the Noise. Good number choice. four for yep. me is Walls of Jericho slash Ride the Sky. <laughs> which which you already had on there and but uh that's my number four yeah. great song i can't get over walls of jericho especially when i went to see pumpkins united when they kicked in and did a couple of these songs with kai singing that was incredible. my highlight of the night it was, yeah. it was an incredible experience I brought back so many great memories yeah it was awesome i've, I've never pumpkins. seen kai hansen perform so that was you were there for that at irving also yeah, and I've never seen Kiski live, and I've never seen uh, Kai Hansen live, so that was amazing. Yeah, so I, saw, I saw Halloween on. Uh, I could have. Pete might be able to refresh my memory. Civic That's Center, yeah, it was. Center. Yeah, with Exodus. Yep. Or Anthrax. Both Anthrax? of them. It was there was three of them. It was Anthrax, Exodus, and uh, Halloween, and then they came back again and they did a. It was Halloween. I think Grim Reaper and Celtic Frost, I believe. They did those headbangers, to headbangers yeah. ball tours, right? I was at definitely at the one with Anthrax because I got Sorry. a backstage pass for that. And I thought it was great because it was my first time in my store and I was hanging out. And Anthrax was backstage just playing hip hop all night. And I remember meeting <laughs> Halloween and having him sign uh, Keeper of Seven Keys. And they were just kind of standing around the corner like, whoa, what's going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah, I got their signatures too. I have it on my tickets though. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. cool. All right, my number four, we're going to go to the Keeper Part 2 album. Uh, how about the title track, The Epic Keeper of the Seven Keys? Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I don't have that one on my list, but that's a great song. Yeah, I dig it. Another we're into the one. top three. Top now. three. All right, Nick, lead it three. off. So my top three, I'm going to the uh, 1994 album Master of the Rings, the first one. 
one with Andy Darrell, the epic and beautiful Where the Rain Grows. Mm. I just find that song again. Where the rain and, and, and you know, the typical like awkward phrasing with their, their German to English, like it's, a, it's an odd phrasing for a title, like Where the cool Rain song. Grows, but just absolutely can play it anytime, anywhere. Um, you know, they really lift you up. They're it's mm -hmm. great. And a number three for me, right? We're up yeah. to my turn. Uh, the how many tears roll yeah. away? How many hearts are torn apart? <laughs> <laughs> All to Jericho, man. How many it wouldn't. It wouldn't be a show here without some Steve Keeler singing, right? <laughs> Chris Allo, I hope you're looking angry. You love. You love it when I sing to you. <laughs> I haven't heard from Chris. Hope he's doing okay. He's good. I was just chatting with him this morning, so he's he's We're doing all struggling. All good. <laughs> He would have been good for this one. Yeah, he's uh, hopefully he'll be joining us on here soon. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, we gotta. I, I forced myself to come on. It's like I'm in the dumps a little bit, but who isn't right now? Yeah. 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 We're glad you're here. Yeah, exactly. All right, my number three has been mentioned by both of you. We're going to go with Ride the Sky from Rolls of Jericho. Ride that sky. Kick ass. Mm -hmm. almost, almost was higher, but then I have two other songs that I think yeah, edge it out just a little bit. So, all right. Rolling higher. <laughs> all right nick what do you got yep you'll let be interchangeable next month they might be something else so for me number two uh how many tears <laughs> i think um that song was uh, it was number one for me for a while it, um it, you know it it really showed you that halloween was going to be able to write some really like seven plus minute ten minute bangers because that was like you know the early part of their career and they yep. showed that they could really do that they can really keep your attention for that one. And that album is definitely more of a, like, um, pretty much a speed metal record. Yeah. More yeah. than a power metal record to me, at least, you know. But ahead of its time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Number, All right, Steve. Number two, number what you got? Number two, heavy metal is the it's law. law. <laughs> I've been waiting for someone to talk about that one, right? Heavy metal is the law. I can hold on. That's not I could have put that whole album, you know. I know. I, I had to stop myself from doing that. That's, yes. uh, yeah, that's a great one. I have a poster. I have to show you. Look, and I have the heavy metal. Woo! Nice. Oh, nice. well, we got to put that one in there. Very Try cool. Try to make it more, enter, more exciting. Look at And look at this wonderful bootleg black white poster of heavy oh, metal. Nice. That's, that's very cool. Is Priest or is it Iron Maiden? Uh, it looks like Eddie up there, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Could be tipped in and downing. It's hard to say. Oh, it's heavy metal. There you go. <laughs> All right, for my number two, I'm going to go back to the EP for a little Victim of Fate. That song's so good. I don't know why it's not in my top ten. But it's not. <clears throat> yeah, that is... Uh... That's uh, that EP is just killer. You know, they had all those early songs that, uh, you yeah. know, if you got the CD reissue of Walls of Jericho, they tacked all of them on there. You know, got Judas, all sorts of great songs, man. There's the EP. Look at, there you go. Nice. My girl, I haven't been to my store in days because I'm in quarantine. My wife has got issues that some of your viewers might know, but uh, I told, I said, Kiki, buy me some Halloween records. I need her. Yeah, I, I will, I will totally buy them. I mean, two she found of these. I'm like, I want a Walls of Jericho, but I didn't get that. I will totally buy that EP on vinyl, without a doubt. I don't have it for sale. That's mine. But, uh, what <laughs> Name the your price. Name <laughs> the price. What is it? $500 right now. Iron Maiden said it. Everybody has their price. Put it up right. in the driveway. 500 bucks. Leave it in an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we at number one? We're at number one. Nick, what do you got? So, as I intimated before, Better Than Raw is my favorite Halloween album, and the song Midnight Sun, uh, from the moment it came out in 1998 uh, till now, that song has remained just my favorite Halloween song of all time. Um, it's the pinnacle of the Kush and Grappau drums and guitar, um, that lineup that they had um, unmatched. There's like three minutes of dual uh, that, that, that stay around the melody in just such a great way. Um, and they even mm -hmm. have a whoa kind of thing, which I love when bands do that. Like, uh, like Heaven Can Wait. Oh. I, mean, I love when they do that. And they do that too. So to me, that is the best Halloween song for me right now. Cool. My best Halloween song is more metal. Metal Invaders. <laughs> no, that's yeah. Ready to Strike. Yeah. Sworn Great to be song. metal. Metal yep. tonight. There it is. I'm not even drinking yet. You know. 
<laughs> I'm Perrier. I don't know. If, maybe it's just lace. It's just good hanging out with you guys today, you know? Yep. We should do one list sober and then the same list drunk. <laughs> I, am not, I am not used to being home alone. Well, Linda's with me and the dog, but it's just, ah, I'm used to socializing and, and doing things, and it's kind of weird right now. Yeah. I hear you. It's number strange. one. My number one. It's Halloween. Title, well, not title track, the epic ending track, or not quite ending track, because the track comes after it, but uh, from Keeper of the Seven Keys, part one, that was that was a song back when I was in college in SUNY New Paltz, the year it came out, man. That song, we played at like every single party we ever had. And it's amazing how you could keep the attention of like a room full of drunk metalheads for 13 minutes, but that song totally could. And everybody would sit and play air guitar and just totally yeah. jam around to it. Just so much fun. And still to this day, it's my favorite Halloween song. When I DJ'd a Halloween party, it wasn't last Halloween, but the year before I was over at Tapped and we put that on. It was almost a reaction of Bohemian Rhapsody with the crowd where everyone was singing. Oh, that's uh, cool. It was a part, yeah. you know what I mean? That's cool. We got to do a party like that. When but, you know, that's special. what it was like at Irving Plaza uh, when we saw the yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Halloween yeah. United. I mean, it was everybody was singing it. And it's like it was just like an amazing moment, you know. And I looked yeah, around and there were there were guys my age, you know, our ages. There were kids singing it. You know, it's, it's great yeah. that they can keep the legacy of it going. Let's go the great pumpkin to arise. <laughs> <laughs> hey. What's interesting guys, about his, um, I can't think of another band. I can't think of another band that had three vocalists like that. That are yeah. that are all take that are, have all done epic parts of the career of the of the band. You know, I thought yep. I was thinking about that earlier today. Other than, I mean, I guess you could Night say, Wish. I guess you could say, Black Sabbath. But maybe yeah. not as long in each time. I mean, yeah, right, right, right. Had, I mean, I love Tony Martin, Black Sabbath. I'm oh, right, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, Sabbath and lesser so Nightwish, I guess you could say they're not as big yeah, as, yeah, true. as these yeah, bands, but but yeah, I mean they had three vocalists that all made epic uh contributions mm -hmm. to the career. And the thing is for me personally, I happen to like Andy Darris's voice better than Kiski. And uh even though Kiski was great and the other thing about Halloween is they did they made those commercial albums that people didn't like very early on in their career. You yeah. know, uh, yeah, and I'll tell you my they, they Halloween made the, the story. Keeper, and they went to a direction. Uh, I quit listening to Halloween mm -hmm. when those albums came out, and I didn't really rediscover them until I went to Pumpkins United. Then I realized there were all these great albums. It was yeah. like this Halloween yeah. explosion. Because I really, when, once they put out, like, was it Pink Bubbles Go Ape? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Chameleon. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, Chameleon, really is good. Chameleon is actually good. Go back and listen to that, but without okay. the pressure of, oh, what happened to my band? And I, I was listening to it recently, and I was like, wow. You know, it's not really a metal album, but uh, it's actually pretty good. But, yeah, yeah. So honorable mention time? Yeah, it? throw out a couple yeah. tunes. Yeah, throw out some songs, guys. Forgot about that. You want me to go first? Go for it. I'm thinking, I mean, Dr. Steen, we already mentioned. Revelations from Better Than Raw. Then there's these songs that are almost like Journey, like with any, any kind of like any way you want it kind of stuff. I Can from Better Than Raw. I like mm -hmm. like Soul Survivor. You mentioned they're, they're like almost like AOR, but they're so catchy, and they're, they're, I just love some of those songs. Uh, Future World, I forgot about that. I didn't really yeah. put that, that. Starlight from the EP, Murderer from the EP, uh, Are You Metal, Mr. Torture, Soul Survivor, which I mentioned, Kill It, the Pumpkins United song with all three of them, I thought was very cool. Very yeah. <laughs> we Burn from Time of the Oak, Steel Tormentor. Judas from Walls of Jericho didn't make my list. Uh, it's pretty much wrapping up what I've got written down. You know? How about you, Nick? Um, Waiting for the Thunder from um, the 2013 album. That name escapes me. Um, I thought that was a good one. Uh, World of Fantasy. Uh, let's see. Mission Motherland. The Dark Ride. Uh, Dreambound. Save Us. Ornst of Life, which was from their very, very early, it was like more of a Killers Era Iron Maiden sounding tune. Yeah. Um, so many. Uh, Revelation, Before the War. Even the silly uh, Lost in America from My God Given Right. I just think it's... it's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's like they make, they, get, they make a cheesy song sound great. Like, mm -hmm. you know, being on a plane, like not knowing what to do, traveling all over the world. Um, the Departed Sun is Going Down. And 
from Rabbit Don't Come Easy, uh, Open Your Life, Just a Little Sign, and The Tune, right in a row. Those three songs, so good. Very good. Very uh, the good. bonus track from Better Than Raw Game, We Shouldn't Play. Awesome. And um, Anything My Mama Don't Like, great song. Do you know that song? <laughs> I, such a bizarre, like, rock kind of uh, number. Really good song. So that's about it. Yeah, I got a couple here. So from uh, My God-Given Right, which I'm not a huge fan of that album, yeah. but I think it starts off really good because Heroes and Battles One are both great songs. I think it goes downhill from there. Yeah. Uh, Straight Out of Hell from the album of oh, the same yes. name is a good tune. Um, I will say the one song I kind of like on Pink Bubbles Go Ape is uh, Kids of the Century. That's kind of, Again, yes. it's kind of yeah. mellow, kind of poppy, but it's a fun song. It's a good song. Uh, Mr. Ego and Y from Master of the Rings. Uh, Falling Higher from Better Than Raw. Nobody mentioned that. It's a kick-ass song. Ah, yeah, and uh, from Walls of Jericho. Why is not on my list. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, great song. Uh, Guardians and Phantoms of Death from mm -hmm. Walls of Jericho. And oh, yeah. uh, Twilight of the Gods, A Little Time, and You Always mm -hmm. Walk Alone. You know, so mm -hmm. yes. from, uh, love Keeper. A Little Time. Yeah. yeah, so uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of other other good stuff as well. So, um, how how did we do time wise? We're good. So uh, that worked out well. Awesome. So how many people here in this little chat room with us tried to do the Insomnium stream yesterday? I did. I heard the yeah trouble, right? It was trouble. They say I didn't check today. Uh, maybe later this afternoon when I wind down. Not that I'm really wound up. I'll probably crack open a beer and try to watch it. But they said it's working today. I figured I'd just support them because I love both of them, so. And, and they got screwed. They yeah, got screwed. Anything streaming right now is probably pretty tough anyhow with so many people online. Yeah. I got a smart TV in my bedroom where I got my treadmill, and half the time that won't even come on, like, won't even log in right now. It'll just swirl around just to try to get Amazon or something to put on behind it, you know? Yeah. I was supposed to be at Inferno Fest in Norway this weekend right now. <laughs> yeah. That's not happening. <laughs> no. As long as everybody I know makes it out of this healthy, all the concerts will happen. They'll happen. Know. Yep. They'll yeah. reschedule everything. Yep. I know I next really week was supposed about. to be Frank Marino was supposed to be at the chance next oh, week. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. looking forward to that. And, you know, yeah. what do you do? I don't even care about concerts. I just want to be able to go out and run the store and go somewhere yeah. and have a burger and a beer, you know what I mean? Or some chicken wings and hang out. Do karaoke yep. again or something. Just simple things when we start to gradually get back out, hopefully. Yeah. Everything exactly. works out, you know? Uh, we'll see how it goes. Take it one day at a time, right? That's all we can do. What so. do we want to do next time? Or can that, is that to be held and disclosed? That's, we'll keep everybody waiting. We'll talk offline and we'll figure it out. And uh, I'll tell you what I got on my list and we'll see if uh, you guys are interested and we'll, we'll take it from there. So, uh, all right, guys. Well, thanks again. Uh, uh, showing off the shirt once again. And I'm sure you got some. You got any of those available at the store when you open, reopen again? No. I'm sure you got <laughs> no, this one's from the tour. Uh, okay. I might have some. Uh, I might have a Halloween print there. In fact, uh, with the store, we. It's been about a week now since I chatted with you with the Opeth and the Metallica thing. Uh, we should be online, uh, hopefully within a week or so. RockFantasy.com, and we're going to be doing an e-commerce store, which you'll be able to buy anything that my distributor has for CDs, vinyl. So, hey, order the New Testament or the New Night Wish or whatever and uh, whatever, or, the, or old old school stuff. That should be all available hopefully soon, and I can start making a little bit of money. There you go. I have not nice. made anything in weeks right now. Awesome. You know? All right. Sounds good. Well, uh, thanks again, guys. Uh, once again, Nick Franco and Steve Keeler, thanks for joining us here on CA Tranquility for another Top 10 Song Show. Hope you guys all enjoyed it. Uh, in the comments and feedback below, make sure you tell us what your favorite 10 Halloween tracks are. Let's get some discussion going. Let's remember we all hear these songs differently. We all have our favorites. There's no right or wrong answer. Nobody's so, wrong. <laughs> nobody's wrong. There's all, a lot of great songs by this band. So curious to see what everybody comes up with. And uh, make sure you visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. For Steve Keeler and Nick Franco, I am Pete Pardo. We'll see you guys real soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay strong, everybody. Stay healthy. <laughs>